Hey guys. So this one is interesting. Uh, this truck I've been working on for a little while now and it's been kicking my ass a little bit. Um, it has a misfire or a shake. Um, I don't really think it's a shake anymore. I'm leaning towards a misfire. At first I thought it was a shake. Uh, so what I did was well, the, I should say that the RPM sensor in the, gate, in the dash would quit on and off, and that's picking up off of the flywheel. So I've seen it before, so I thought, you know, I want to go check the bolts on the flywheel and make sure that they are all uh, intact and, and, and whatnot. So I checked that, pulled the transmission, pulled the clutch. The clutch was a cheap piece of shit that was most of the way worn out, so... I went and replaced it while I, was, while I was in there and took it for a drive, didn't fix anything. So kind of some known issues um, is this timing sensor up on the front of these engines. I put a known good sensor that I got in there as well as I replaced this uh, throttle position sensor. And neither of them fixed it. So then while I was driving it, I thought, you know, it kind of sounds like the Jake brakes are coming on. So I went ahead and took all the Jake brakes out of the engine and I plugged the oil ports and I was going to replace the solenoids, you know, and just rebuild these. But I thought, well, you know what? If I plug the oil port, I can still drive this thing. So I just put, took the Jake heads completely out of it to eliminate them. And that also hasn't fixed the issue. So now I am, I got my fuel gauge uh, rigged up there again in the window. Uh, we're making the 25 PSI within three to five seconds, like Insight tells you and we're running at about 150 psi 150 to 160 so no issues with fuel pressure um, i also got a test ecu because i believe that possibly the injector driver in the ecu has failed at this point so i'm going to put the test ecu on there and see what we get um, i redid the ecm ground down there uh where the heck is it can't even see it here down there further anyway I redid that ground and then I pulled all these injector plugs out cleaned them and used some dielectric grease on them and uh, the one is damaged which I don't like but it is in there fairly good um, but which one is it that guy there physically damaged so I don't love that but I don't believe it to be making an issue but once we get to the bottom of this issue I will fix that just to be safe um, obviously did you know new fuel filter and all that stuff um, he had this at a previous shop and they put a six pack of injectors in it and that didn't solve the issue either so if you're wondering why I haven't looked into that too much, that's why. Um, nothing shows up on a cutout test on Cummins uh, Quick Serve or Insight, sorry. And no active or stored faults relating to anything to do with the engine. So, yeah, this one's a bit of a tricky one, but I think we're getting to the bottom of it. Okay guys, so we're back on the N14. So we went for a real big drive with it out to this guy's brother's farm and a nearby town. And we got hooked on to a set of Super Bs because he said that a trailer, even an empty one, will make this problem worse. So, we went, and while he was driving, I was sitting in the passenger seat with Insight, and uh, 
every time that it would fault and miss, I would cut out cylinders until, until the problem went away. Um, cause it's so intermittent. So when it came on, I just cut out cylinders until it quit and started acting normal again. But while I was doing that, I found that number one cylinder made no difference when it was missing like that. Turn direction, yeah, bugger. Um, when I would turn number one cylinder off while it was missing, it made no difference. And number two, three, four, five, and six, when you cut them out while it was missing, then it really, really was missing. So I just put the original ECM back on the engine and I checked my pins from cylinder number one back to my ECM. And my pins are, or my wires, sorry, test out just fine. I did a wiggle test while I had continuity and uh, never broke continuity once. And both the pins are, are snug. So what I think I'm going to do now is swap number one and number two injector uh, and then go for another drive and do my cutout test while we're driving. And if it's an injector, the problem should follow and go to cylinder number two. If it doesn't, then, <laughs> well, then, well, I don't know, we got bigger issues, but, okay. So as I said, there's no no jakes in here. So this is this is just a pipe plug, one sixteenth. Well, it's actually a one sixteenth to one eighth adapter with a one eighth plug in it. But uh, that'll work to plug the oil that would normally go to your jake heads. Okay, so I'm gonna break these loose and take the tension off of here and then pull these rocker shafts out and then the injector and I'm going to take one and put it in two, take two and put it in one. And if this injector is bad, it should go to this hole after. If the problem stays in this hole, then we got other troubles that we'll have to address. But anyway, the camera's about to die, so I'll probably charge it and do some filming for reassembly. So there is the hold down. Yeah, this truck was kicking my ass for a while. Okay, I'm gonna grab that other injector. number two in the one hole and the reason I'm not cleaning these is because they're not dirty um, they are oil covered but they're not dirty they've only been out for a couple of minutes
Okay. Now the torque on them, 30 foot pounds for the injector hold down bolts. Thirty foot pounds. No uh, torque turn procedure or anything like that. Just nice and simple. Okay. Plug in your electrical. Okay, now those are swapped. So now we'll just go back in with the rocker chain. I'll grab those pieces. We'll do our crossovers first. I'm putting all these back in the same location they come from. I try to do that all the time if I can. train gotta make sure that our push tubes engage properly which they aren't uh, let me get a screwdriver sorry I'm just trying to stabilize you guys to get this push tube engaged properly with these rockers. And right now I think they are. Yeah. You'll feel they kind of stick. See how it's just hanging up there? They get sticky when they're in the right spot. Thread them hold downs and we'll torque these. I gotta double check, but I'm pretty sure it's 115 foot pounds.
I'm going to check that torque spec and then we'll torque them. Yep, so they're 115 foot pounds. So 5, 10, 15. Okay, put the next rocker in. That looks good for me. Okay. Uh, we'll set the we'll set the injectors, and uh, we'll go for another drive. Let's see what happens. So now we got to bar this engine over to get us to the proper spot. So the first one I see is A. Okay, but it's not A of top dead center that we need right now. So. I'm gonna bar it over some. Till we're at A again, which will be number one compression. Can't even hardly see that. I think it's B. Must be B.
There's B. So, all right. There's lots of compression in this engine. Mind you, I'm using this piss little bar. So we're on number A, or letter A, and both both our rockers are loose. So that means we're at number one TDC. Compression. So that's where we wanna be to set the injectors. Now the book says to run the plunger down until it bottoms, but not past, and you'll feel it. That's it, okay? So just show you that again. There it is. It's just subtle, but they want you to do that a couple times to bleed any fuel out of your plunger. Okay, so we're just gonna go. There we go, we bottomed. So now, they suggest two flats. They back it off two flats. So this is our first flat. So one and two flats. So this flat should be over there. Okay, that's one flat. And that's two flats. I come here. Tighten our jam nut. Okay, and I'll get a second wrench so we're not turning that. Just one sec. Anyways, guys, that's how you install and set up these injectors. Uh, I got to charge this thing again. And uh, yeah, I'll show a video of it running and then we'll take it for a drive here. Well, guys, we just went for a drive and uh, we were able to duplicate the problem and cut out the cylinders and now the problem has followed the injector so we've basically confirmed an issue on injector number one which is in the number two hole now um, so we're going to go ahead and order a set of six put them in and we're going to be done with this baby <laughs> 